Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I'm going to go over how to create a turntable using occlusion, wireframe, and also color. I am using Maya 2017. A lot of things have changed compared to the previous Maya, so that's the reason why I'm recreating these videos. So right now we have a character. She's rigged and ready to rock and roll. I also set up the turntable so we can actually turn. Whoa, that's a little fast. If I right click here, playback speed, real time, rewind and play, and you can see that my character is turning around. I decided to do 240 frames, which is about 10 seconds. Maya 2017 is actually using something called Arnold. And if I go up here to the top right and go to Arnold Render Viewer, you can see how she's going to be rendered in color. Here she is. She has zombie eyes right now, but uh, I'm getting the idea of what uh, she's going to look like. The next thing I want to do is actually start uh, creating a shader for her and also what's called render layers. Here at the top right, there is a clapper with blue sheets of paper. Click on that. And this is going to create the render layer scene. Over here, there's a little white piece of paper with a little plus sign. Click on that. And what that's going to happen is this is going to create a layer. We're going to call this AO, which is ambient occlusion. And we're also going to right click on here and create a collection. Now, what's interesting about Maya 2017 is that it's really going to force you to be very organized and to kind of separate things in a logical manner. So I'm going to go ahead and call this my geometry. And over here to the right is where we're going to place all of our geometry. I'm going to grab my sniper gun, my body geo, and probably my spine, and then click add. Now if you want to see what we have so far, oh, I can already tell I'm missing the vest, just click on this little eyeball and it will show you what we have selected. So I'm missing the floor and a couple of other things. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little eye to go back to the scene. And let me select my, I'm going to grab this guy up the vest, go to my geometry, click on add and let's see what that looks like all right just missing the floor going back here click on this base again go to your geometry click add the next thing we want to do is actually overwrite it with occlusion so we're going to right click on here we're going to create material override i'd like to label everything so this is going to be material override ao enter and over here under override material you're going to click on that little checker and it turns out that there's actually a shader that is called occlusion. So it's under Arnold. You can actually scroll down and look for it, or you can write OCC. And there it is. Everything has turned gray. So to see how it looks like, we're going to go to our Arnold render viewer, which is over here at the bottom. And now you can see how my character looks like in occlusion. Over here to the right, you can see the attributes. This is a really nice place to be able to manipulate certain things. One of them could be the samples. For example, if I feel like this is too noisy, I can go ahead and increase my samples to, let's say, 5. And it will automatically start uploading it. The spread is how far do you want occlusion to go? Do you want it to actually be, uh, do you want it to have a really tight, dark lines underneath it, like so? Where the occlusion doesn't go too far, or you can actually spread the occlusion. That's basically what that means. So I'd like it at default. The fall off, do you want it to have very sharp edges or not? And I'm okay with the default as well. I'm actually very happy with the results of the occlusion. I'm going to leave it like that. The next thing is going to be our wireframe. It's very similar to what we just did. We're going to go ahead and create a new render layer. This one is going to be called my wireframe. I need to create my collection, which is going to be a geometry. And then over here, we're going to select everything, the vest, the body geo, the sniper, the eyes are attached to the spine, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Select the base geo, go ahead and click on add, and let's see what we have so far. Boom. It looks like we have all of our objects in here. Next, we're going to create the wireframe shader override. We're going to right click, create material override. I'm going to call this wireframe. I like to label everything, so if anybody opens this up, they'll immediately be like, oh, it makes perfect sense. Monica's great. And that's exactly what I want people to think when you give them your files. It's like, wow, they're amazing. Thank you. It's so easy to understand. All right, override material. Let's click on this little guy, the little checker up here at the top. I'm going to do W-I-R. There it is, A-I. That stands for Arnold Wireframe. And looks like everything's grayed out. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Yikes, very busy. All right, so over here to the right, we have our attributes. I'm going to choose polygons, which is how Maya renders everything. I am also going to reduce the line width. She's smooth shaded, so I'm going to grab all this and press 1. Okay, there she goes. So this is my low poly version, right? So you have to be careful between the number 1 and the number 3 
one is the low poly and then when you press three that actually does a smooth preview which is what you get here so pressing one is actually the more accurate now that i have this i'm not too convinced that i need wireframe on the ground after all that's not really important here so i'm going to go and remove the ground from this uh, geometry collection Let's see if i can find it here it's the base i'm going to remove that there it goes the occlusion should have a base because it needs contact shadows for the feet so we currently have our occlusion our wireframe and our beauty now we just need to set up our render settings let's go to render settings i am uh, make sure you've set your project i'd like to right click on here and go to render layer backslash render layer so they all get their own little folder you can see here that's going to call it master layer i'm going to use tiffs some people use exrs i personally like tiffs i'm going to make sure compression is none this is an animation so i'm going to go ahead and go to name number extension uh, i only need three padding i know d4 i'm not doing a thousand renders just 240. Let's see start frame is at one and frame is 240. I'm going to get rid of any weird camera i don't need all these cameras i just need to turntable one so i'm going to go ahead and delete everything but my turntable one i'm keeping it low hd 540 i highly recommend it this is going to be for your demo reel or anything go higher the higher the quality the longer it's going to take but the better it's going to look we're going to go over here to the top left rendering we're going to go to render render and here's a new one render sequence options open it up you just want to make sure the render all layer is activated and then render and close it's going to start doing its crazy thing. All right, I'm going to pause this for a second, and I will be right back when it's done. Okay, so now my renders are done. I have the master layer, the wireframe, and also my AO, which is my ambient occlusion. My master layer, I have 1 through 240, and as well as my ambient occlusion and wireframe. So now I'm ready for After Effects. Now that I have all my render layers done, I am going to go ahead and bring it into After Effects, and that is going to be for my next tutorial. So I will see you next time.